So if the world continues at its current pace, by 2050, there's projected to be more plastic than fish by weight in the ocean. On average, the world produces 380 million tons of plastic each year. Only 9% of it is recycled. It's estimated that about 20 billion pounds of plastic flows into the ocean every year. Plastic that can take hundreds of years to degrade, if it ever does. But what if we could make biomaterials that work as well or better than plastics? It turns out there are naturally occurring microorganisms in the ocean that eat greenhouse gas as their food and turn it into PHB inside of their cells. When you extract it, it's meltable. It's a material that's strong, dishwasher safe, all the things that make plastic great, and we call it air carbon. Imagine being able to buy products that perform like plastics, but break down harmlessly in the environment. Well, you actually can. These air carbon products are starting to show up at Shake Shacks and Targets across the US. The question is, what's it gonna to take to get these everywhere? This is Make It Count, a series on environmental innovations and the math it takes to bring them to the masses. Most plastics today are produced from petroleum, but there are two main alternatives. The first is PLA. It's made from sugar. The problem with PLA is that it's still synthetic and it won't break down easily in the environment. The other common alternative is known as PHA, a common variant of which is the molecule PHB. PHB is a molecule that's made in almost all known living things, including the human body. It just so happens that if you extract PHB, you can turn it into a fine white powder, and because it's meltable, you can use it to replace plastic. The big difference, though, is that plastic is a synthetic material. In other words, it's not produced in nature. PHB is different. It's made in nature, so nature sees it like a food source and will eat it and degrade it like a banana peel. New Light has figured out how to reproduce a process that occurs naturally in the ocean, where microorganisms consume air and greenhouse gases dissolved in salt water to produce PHB, and then turn that into powder, pellets, and ultimately finished products. While that certainly sounds really cool, Making that process work at scale is a journey that took Mark and his team 18 years to figure out. We're aiming to produce the products that have the most impact. And one of our goals is to get to about a 20 billion pound per year production rate, because that's approximately the amount of plastic currently flowing into the ocean. We want to displace that with air carbon. The key to the widespread adoption of biomaterials is price parity, the point when their price is equal to or less than traditional plastics. Currently, Biomaterials are 20 to 50% more expensive. We make such a small fraction of this coming on, you know, trillion pound per year market to really have the impact that we want. It's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of steel to get there. As we go forward now, we're gonna take this kind of like our solar panel and just do more of these in a row in a tank farm. The cost of plastic is largely driven by the price of petroleum, which is pretty low at the moment. Plastics are also a well-established technology, manufactured all over the world. In order to catch up, companies like New Light need to start achieving economies of scale. And so the next decade, we're gonna be putting as much capacity in the ground as we can so that we can supply as many people as possible. We have a very clear path to being able to provide real volume. So scale is the name of the game right now. There are other concerns about many biomaterials. The biggest is competition with food supplies. As more crops are used to produce biomaterials, there's less available for food, and the price of food goes up. But air carbon doesn't use food crops. The nice thing about using greenhouse gas is it allows you to avoid the use of food crops or other things that would generate environmental damage. If you think about it, greenhouse gas is really the feedstock of choice for, for nature. And so we think it's nice to be able to harness that as a carbon resource. Right now, bioplastics account for just 1% of the 368 million tons of plastic produced annually. When can we expect to see a shift? Look, it's not gonna be easy, and it certainly isn't automatic, but it's possible. Air carbon is currently being sold in over 1,900 locations across the US, in target pilot locations, our goal is, hopefully within the next decade, to get into you know, as many places as we can with the goal to displace plastics with a natural material. Most biomaterials are years away from beating the price of plastic. But entrepreneurs like Mark are doing everything they can to bring those technologies to us sooner. 
every idea was viewed as quasi impossible until it became the norm. Ultimately, I want to make air carbon the most competitive technology in the world, bar none.